My name is Neil Brown, Executive Director of the Controllers Council. And before I introduce our expert panelists and our partner sponsor, let me share some brief housekeeping items. First, we'll have Q&A at the end of the presentation. So please use your GoToWebinar control panel to ask our expert questions. Next, this webinar is CPE eligible with four polling questions. So please answer each poll for CPE or to benchmark your peers if you're not uh, going for CP CPE. Please allow up to one week for CPE certificates. Also regarding CPE, you'll receive a brief survey directly after the webcast today, so please complete. And finally, you'll receive a link to this webcast via email in the next 24 hours, so no need for notes or screenshots. So with that, I'm very pleased to introduce our partner and sponsor, Brex, the AI-powered spend platform that transforms finance teams from reactive no-sayers to pro proactive growth drivers. With Brex, companies spend with confidence by empowering employees to make smarter financial decisions from anywhere. Brex provides corporate cards, banking, treasury, business accounts, and global payments, plus intuitive software for travel and expenses that make it easy to plan and track all companies spend in one place in real time. Tens of thousands of companies from startups to global enterprises, including DoorDash, Flexboard, and Compass, use Brex to proactively control spend, reduce costs, and increase efficiency on a global scale. I'm very excited to introduce our speaker and subject matter expert, Eric Joe, Chief Accounting Officer at Brex. Eric started his career in PwC's banking and capital markets practice and built over 11 years experience working with banks, brokers, dealers, and large multinational financial institutions and operational management. Eric is an inactive certified public accountant who holds a BS in both accounting and finance from Georgetown University. He leverages his comp comprehensive financial skills and knowledge to drive Brex operations towards growth and success. Eric, welcome. Thanks, Neil. Um, just to get kick started, uh, let's go to the next slide. Thanks everyone for attending uh, the session today. Uh, hopefully you all know AI is a really hot topic across uh, the finance function across various companies. Um, and we use it a lot at Brex today and we're looking at ways to continuously improve our processes here in the finance and accounting team. And I'm looking forward to sharing uh, them all with you. I am gonna add one more bit uh, to Neil's gracious introduction of Brex and myself, which is that at Brex, I think one thing that differentiates us from a lot of the software, financial software uh, services companies that you might look at, we are actually two sides of the coin, meaning we provide the software layer to help you manage spend and, and, and analyze it and then book the right entries for all your uh, corporate card charges as well as bill payments, et cetera. But we also provide the financial services themselves. And, and what that means is, we provide software, but we also are the actual corporate card issuer. We provide the bank account ourselves. We have a great partner for the travel TMC uh, work as well. Um, and we're active in 120 plus countries uh, with the customers that you see here, as well as the yearly transaction value uh, that you see here at 20 billion plus. Um, so we've grown a lot over the last uh, seven, well, seven years of company operations. I've been here for five and a half. Um, so if you have any questions, we can follow up with you after. Let's go to the next slide. So in terms of the agenda today, we're going to be going over, you know, and, and this is a dilemma I face every day, but the dilemma between controlling costs, but also supporting growth at the company, uh, especially since the end of the ZERB era, zero interest rate period. Um, in my sector, in the fintech sector that's venture backed, there's been a huge emphasis on thinking about our operating efficiency, but continuing to maintain uh, top line growth um, at the expectation of our investors and other stakeholders. And so managing both sides of that uh, it has been challenging, but there are ways to do that with AI. 
Um, second, we're going to think about kind of like there's always a need to prioritize growth, especially for my company when we were raising our $12 billion round, right? That, that was a valuation that was based on our forward looking projections. And so to reach that valuation, to grow into that valuation, there was a lot of execution and further business operations that we needed to accomplish in order to achieve that. Um, third, we're going to go over at the end of the day, I have limited resources those limited resources, I have to prioritize the day-to-day -day books and records and cleanliness of the financials. And then there's this hurdle of manual work to get there that kind of prevents my team from doing other valuable analytical work that might be more helpful from an FP&A perspective. Um, next, we'll go over how do you achieve all that? Well, how can, how can AI be your ally in achieving those priorities? Uh, and then we'll uh, finish off with some Q&A. And so one thing that we want to call out is, and, and I said this before, recent PwC poll survey mentioned how 89% of CFOs say that one of their top priorities is to balance co cost cutting and growth. Uh, it's one of their top challenges and we're all just being pulled in both directions. Next slide. And here's a quote, like you think about marketing, and this is a quote where, and I'm going to just repeat it, but you can cut marketing spend as much as you want, but it's never going to get you to where you need to be. My takeaway for one of our favorite call centers at Brex is I can certainly cut marketing spend, but if I cut marketing spend, then I'm not going to achieve the growth necessarily, assuming your marketing decisions and investments in marketing dollars are going to be helpful towards your top line. But if I cut all that stuff, I'm going to hurt my funnel four months down the road or two quarters or a year down the road because some of the investments that you make into marketing and brand spend, you won't see for, it, you won't get immediate satisfaction. You, 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 have to, you have to wait to see the fruits of that labor come out like six to 12 months from now. So the reason I bring up marketing also is because it's one of the cost, it's the cost center at our company at Brex where month to month I do, by the way, I run a corporate FP&A at the company as well, but when we do our budget to actuals every month, it's the one department or one cost center where they kind of get in trouble for going over, but they also get in trouble if they don't meet the expectation. Cause that means that they haven't done the work and services that, that we need to promote the business and, and win customers and and to, to build the funnel. Um, so I just I just think it's an interesting anecdote to think about for related to growth. Next. And again, growth is a top priority. I will say the thing about revenue growth that goes hand in hand with cross cutting uh, with with cost cutting is that. Revenue growth is one of the things that also solves the cost cutting problem. Meaning, right, you're only cutting costs if you think the investments that you're making into those cost centers aren't working for your top line or the general operating efficiency of your company. And so one of the things that I always stress when I look at the budget to actuals and I'm working with our business stakeholders here at Brex is that, okay, if we cut this, sure, in theory, we will reduce our burn for the year or we'll look like we're operating more efficiently. But if we're hampering our growth going forward, that also can't be the right solution because the more revenue I get, in theory, that covers all the costs for the rest of the company as well. Um, you know, when I talk to my CFO, we talk about this all the time, revenue solves all illnesses at a business. Um, and it's one of those things where, I mean, it's not, we're not at growth at all costs anymore at Brex. And I think certainly at most other companies um, around the world, but it's important to have healthy growth. It's important to try to sustain that growth. And it's important to do that so that, you know, the equity at your company is valuable to shareholders and that you can run a operating, operationally efficient business just for the foreseeable future. Um, like I mentioned here, right? Like, you know, it, if, if my job was just to cut spending and that was my, like, just to get the SGNA down, that's really easy. But then I, I have to work with my team 
and all the budget owners and business stakeholders across the company to ensure that the decisions that we're proposing or the recommendations that we're making related to cost structure actually makes sense for their operations and to hit their own objectives and goals. So it's really important to align with everyone and make sure the decisions that we're making overall make sense. Um, and it requires time. You have to spend the time and dig into the details with all of these folks. And where are you gonna get that time is the, is the next question. Right, and to get that time, you kind of have to think about all the busy work that the finance team is doing nowadays. And so questions that your team is always, and my team still does from time to time is, okay, where's the purchase order for this request? Uh, here's all the card transactions that are coming through. Some of these need receipts. We need to track down all the card holders and try to get the receipts uh, in a timely basis so that we can book uh, the expenses to the right GL codes. Um, invoices coming in and we're waiting on the business or department head to approve this invoice before we pay out, paying out. So there's a lot of coordination that we're doing across the function just to make sure administratively we have the right support in place so that we can proceed uh, with our day-to-day -day bookkeeping uh, processes. Um, and so there are answers for this. There's been automation that existed for a while now, especially before with configurations that you can do uh, within your ERPs. And then going forward, there's been RPA or robotic process, process automation. Um, and now with AI, it, it's really what it's done, it's added a dynamic layer to existing technology to make 